one of superheroes who is stranded without government funding and trying to get a job. How? By being the best waiter to earn the most tips and get the only available job in town. Do you want to learn how to play Bond to Surf? In this video, we're going to take you through the full rules for this game. And if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips and strategies along the way. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant and Stella from Evil University bringing you a variety of quality board game videos. On this channel, we do a lot of overview, review, playthrough, vlog and how to play just like this one. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and do hit the bell to be notified when we post new videos. Now let's get to the rules to Born to Surf, designed by Nick Sauer and Diet Sauer and published by Shoot Again Games. In Born to Surf, players play the role of down on their luck superheroes. The government has cut their funding and now they're stuck waiting tables at the local restaurant. Over several rounds of play, the superheroes will serve the different customers in this restaurant, attempting to best satisfy a table because by holding the majority, they will gain the tip available from that table. They can also call on help from their own superhero abilities as well as seeking help from the local staff. After completing both the lunch and the dinner service, the superhero who has earned the most money from tips gets a permanent job and wins the game. To set up the game, each player chooses a superhero by taking the card and the matching power board. This is flipped over to the power side. There are 10 heroes available in the game, with these 5 having simpler powers to play and these ones a little more advanced. Each player then takes a Fortress of Loneliness board and 13 service markers in his or her colour. The player colour is determined by the banner on the fortress, not the stripe on the superhero. But of course, you may want to make these as similar as possible for an easier game. Give one player the first hero marker, the starting turn order will be clockwise from that player. Lay out the tables in the middle of the playing area in number order, as well as the phantom realm. The number of tables you use depends on your player count. 3 in a 2 player game, 5 in a 3 player game, 7 in a 4 player game, and all 9 in a 5 player game. Next, the players will choose which of the 8 staff member cards will be present in this game. Each staff member comes with its own special ability which you can use when you activate it. To set this up, first find the washroom attendant. This staff member will be used in every game. Then, in reverse turn order, each player chooses one other staff member that they wish to use in the game. As such, the number of staff members will be equal to the number of players plus one. The exception to this is in a two-player game in which each player chooses two of the remaining staff members so that there will be a total of five in the game. Set the chosen staff members up near the tables. Next, set up all of the tip cards. Start by separating them into four tiles, yellow and green, lunch and dinner. In the green packs, separate all of the cards which meet your player count from those which don't. Return those which don't meet your player count to the box. For each of the yellow packs, shuffle them up and then deal out a number of them which corresponds to your player count. This will be four in a two player game, six in a three player game, seven in a four player game, and 9 in a 5 player game. Shuffle all of the lunch cards together and shuffle all of the dinner cards together. Then place the lunch cards on top of the dinner cards. Then deal one tip card onto each table in this lower left slot. Green tip cards go face up, you'll always know how much those tables will be worth, while yellow tip cards go face down and there's some uncertainty. Finally, get the scoreboard which is printed inside this menu and place each player's score marker next to the board ready to start. You're now ready to play. To start each round, each person makes sure that his or her powers board is on this side, showing the player's abilities, and the player takes five of the service markers from his or her Fortress of Loneliness and places them off the board. These are the markers that will be used in this round. These ones are held back for future rounds. Then each player flips one token over to the priority side, showing the plus one. Note that if a player has fewer than five tokens remaining in the fortress, then the player places all tokens he or she has, 
still flipping one to the plus one side. Then, starting with the player who has the first hero marker, each player takes it in turns, going clockwise around the table, to take one action, which involves placing one service marker. This can be done in one of three ways, either by serving a table, by interacting with a staff member, or by passing, returning the service marker to the Fortress of Loneliness. Players can freely place either a normal service marker or their plus one service marker in any of these actions. Once all service markers have been placed in a round, the round ends, any tables which have been completely filled are scored, and then play is set up for the following round. Play continues in this manner until the entire deck of tip cards has been emptied, and the player who gains the most money over that time wins the game. So now let's look at each of these actions and steps in more detail, starting with the three types of actions you can do with your service markers. The first action is to serve a table, and it's by serving tables that players will gain access to the tip money that they need to win the game. To take this action, the player takes a service marker, chooses any one of the tables that is in play, and then places that service marker on the lowest available space in that table. There will be between three and five spaces available on each table. When placing a service marker, a player may place a normal service marker or a priority plus one dollar. When the table is ultimately scored, any priority markers which have been placed there will increase the value of that table regardless of the player who placed the token. So players will be aiming to place their priority markers on tables they think they'll win. Note that these two spaces here, which are present on every table, are not used for players' service markers. Those have another use that I'll go into shortly. A player's second option is to visit one of the staff members. And to do this, the player takes a service marker and places it onto an available empty space on one of the staff. A player can place either a normal service marker or a priority service marker, but any priority service markers placed are flipped down to become normal service markers. There are three different colours of staff available in the game. Red staff have an effect which is activated immediately when the marker is placed. Yellow staff are activated at the end of the service phase, in other words, once all players have used all service markers, and green staff are activated during the scoring phase. A couple of the red staff, the hostess and the chef, come with their own special tokens which increase the value of tables, and these are the ones which are placed into these two spaces here, giving an additional bonus to that table's tip. Each staff member has a different number of white spaces available for markers, and note that this space on the washroom attendant is available only for four or five player games. Note that each staff member's powers are explained in text on the card and elaborated on in more detail on pages five to seven of the rulebook. A player's third option is to pass, and to do this the player simply takes a service marker and puts it back into his or her fortress of loneliness. This means that the player is going to take fewer actions in this round, but will have some more markers left in the fortress for future rounds. Because, as we'll see later, players will be losing their service markers to the Phantom Realm as the game goes on. And so passing, as a means of making sure the player has enough of these markers left, can be part of the strategy in the mid to late phases of the game. Once all of the service markers have been placed, proceed to the scoring phase, and you'll score each table in number order. If you get to a table and there are no service markers on it at all, then the customers storm out from being kept waiting too long, and discard the tip card. If a table has at least one service marker but is not full, then the customers are still eating, and simply move on to the next table. If a table is completely full, such as these three tables, then you will score that table. Firstly, work out who has the most service markers on that table. That player wins the table. In these two cases, it's green. In this one, there's a tie between yellow and red. When there's a tie, whoever has a service marker on the highest numbered plate wins the table and so it's always good to serve a table later. Next, evaluate the value of the tips on that table. You'll do this by adding the value on the tip card to any tokens that are placed in these two table slots, 
Any bonus which is shown in green next to the table, this will be plus one for a four seat table and plus two for a five seat table. And any plus ones that are shown on service markers on the table. So table three has a total tip value of eight dollars. Table four, once you flip the yellow tip card over, has a total value of six dollars. And table five, in this case, has a value of four plus three plus one plus one plus one is ten dollars. It's worth noting that you're not going to know how much is on a yellow tip card until you serve it, and it's more variable. At lunchtime, green tip cards will all be worth either five or six dollars, while yellow tip cards could be worth anywhere from three to nine. While at the more lucrative dinner shift, green tips are worth eight or nine dollars, while yellow tips are worth between six and twelve. Then you'll score the tips. Firstly, the player who won the table must take one of the service markers, place it into the phantom realm, and then score the tip. So here, the green player would get $8. Then, the player who won the table may optionally score a second service marker, if he or she has one on the table. Once again, the player would move the service marker into the phantom realm, and then score the full value of the tip. The winning player may only score at most two, and any remaining service markers go back to the fortress. Service markers in the Phantom Realm are essentially lost from the player's circulation, and so a player, while always forced to place at least one in the Phantom Realm when winning a table, may choose to hold back the second one and not score it if it's a low value table. This would keep that service marker safe to be scored again on a higher value tip later in the game. And remember once again that dinner tips are on average $3 higher than lunch tips, and so spending all of your service markers on lunch may not be a winning strategy. Then players who did not win the table get a consolation tip equal to half of the total tip value. So for each remaining service marker, return it to the player's fortress, and then gain half the tip value rounded down. So in this case, a total of $4 for each of these service markers then discard the tip card. Carry these steps out for each completed table. So here the green player could score these markers for $6 if he or she wished, but if the player didn't want to score both of the service markers could return any others to the fortress. Any plus one tip markers will still add to the tip even if they're not the one scored, and so on along all of the tables. Additionally, any green staff that you've placed service markers onto during this round are activated during scoring. Some of these will change the way a different table is scored or allow a player to score a table fully that he or she did not win. Some of them, like the bartender, simply give the player extra money. Once the scoring phase is complete, any of the service markers that are on staff members are returned to the player's fortresses, not lost to the Phantom Realm. Any service markers on unscored tables stay where they are, and staff member tokens may or may not be returned to those staff, depending on the rules for that staff member. Refill any empty tables, remembering that yellow tip cards go face down, and green go face up. Note that you may end up with some dinner orders while you still have lunch orders on the tables, and this is fine. The first hero marker moves one step clockwise around the table, and prepare for the next round. In addition to the basic rules of the game, each player has an order pad tile which shows the two special powers of his or her superhero. During each round of play, each player may use one of these powers before flipping the tile face down to show that it's been used. Some powers showing the knife and fork are done during the service phase, some showing the wad of cash are done during the scoring phase. When using a power during the service phase, this is done either to enhance the placement of a service marker, or in addition to placing a service marker. While when using a power in the scoring phase, this is declared at the time that that table is scored. Naturally, if a player has used his or her service phase action, he or she will not have the scoring phase action left to use when the time comes. Power cards are flipped back face up at the start of each round, ready for use again. As mentioned before, any time you fully score one of your service markers, it's going to become lost in the Phantom Realm and unable to be used for the rest of the game. 
The only way to retrieve one of these tokens from the Phantom Realm is to use the Washroom Attendant Staff Member. And this is why the Washroom Attendant is available in every game. Placing a marker on the Washroom Attendant allows you to take one token back and place it into your fortress. Players need to be careful to keep enough tokens left for the dinner phase where they can score the higher value tips. The end of the game is triggered when the tip deck runs empty. After this deck is empty, you'll play one more round and do a final scoring round before determining the winner. In the final round of play, any tables that don't have a tip card on them are closed. Play the final round as normal, except that if all of the table spaces ever become filled, then the game ends immediately and proceeds to scoring, even if there are still spaces open on the staff. In final scoring, you will score all of the tables as normal, except that even if a table is incomplete, you will still fully score it. So here, in endgame scoring, Red could score both of these tokens for the full tip value of 10. The player with the highest score wins. There are a couple of variants to Born to Serve that you can play. For a more even game, simply remove all of the superheroes. Everyone will have the same power, being none. For a shorter game, do away with the lunch tips and simply play with dinner. Because it's a shorter game, you don't have the same pressure on losing tokens to the Phantom Realm, and so you can also do away with the Washroom Attendant. Finally, for a more difficult variant, you will not use the Washroom Attendant, Valet, or Mater D in your game. This removes two of the staff members that give you the easiest ways of scoring, and removes your ability to get tokens back from the Phantom Realm over a full-length game. And that's how to play Born to Serve. We hope that you enjoyed the video, and we hope you enjoy playing. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting the like button, write your questions or feedback in the comment sections below. You can also join our Facebook group, Meeple University Community, to share your love for board games. And finally, if you'd like to be among the first notified for our next videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can click on the Meeple up in the corner to do so, and do hit the bell for notifications. Until next time!